Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are wrapping up the week with our Series 11 sample teams and today we'll be featuring a team from Revelto. So if you've missed any of the episodes from earlier in this week, do go back and check them out from Monday through to Friday this week. We've had a different team and normally what I would do at the start of the week is just have a bunch of them ready for you to kind of pick off and use. But I thought this time around, what we do is break them up and have a few battles with each team as we go through the week and it gives you the chance to see the teams being piloted kind of understand them a little bit more and uh, give you a bit more insight into getting into using them in series 11 so hopefully you've enjoyed this layout more than what we would normally do and uh, getting a bit more benefit from it these rental codes will stay up for four weeks from this episode so after that they will come down if you do message after that point um unfortunately they will be replaced because we do like to put more teams out onto the rental system um as we go through and feature more teams on the channel uh, unfortunately it's just Pokemon you're only allowed five spaces at a time which is just ridiculous so hopefully that improves in the next generation but that's an argument for another time getting on to today's episode we have got an Inveltal team and uh, supporting cast of Reggie Steel, Landorus, Tapu Fini, Incineroar and Among Us so we've got things in here where we can help uh, some of the options in the team set up. Ivelto very good against a lot of the format, you know, with the Assault Vest as well. Does have its threats that it needs to watch out for, but the Assault Vest kind of helps mitigate against a lot of those. Uh, you've got the Amoongus in there with the redirection, which is going to be pretty big for this team. Um, and then you're going to have to cover things like Zashin for sure, because you're going to have Incineroar in there to help with that Intimidate. You've got Double Intimidate with the Landorus there to help shut down Zashian threats. You've got the Life Orb on Landorus just to give us a little bit more extra power. And I feel like you can get away with it in this team with the redirection support from the Amoongus. You've got a lot of setup you can see in the team and that's kind of supported by Fake Out and by the redirection from the Amoongus. The other thing that you would think that would cause us a few issues would be maybe something like Shadow Rider Calyrex which Yveltal deals with pretty handily. So you're primarily going to be looking at Tapu Fini to set up with the Calm Mines in the right situation or that Reggie Steel that can pretty much win a game by itself with a combination of Amnesia or Iron Defense and then the leftover combination with that Body Press. So friends, here's the rental code we'll have a couple of games with the team now hopefully have some successful games with it that'd be great and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode and that will wrap up our series 11 sample week so hopefully you've been enjoying the episode so far this week and hopefully you enjoy today's one so without further ado let's jump into game one of today's video okay so first up today we have a Raichu, Politoed, Galarian, Moltres, Kingdra, Urshifu and Lugia team so you know like on face value of it we've got a pretty good matchup to kick us off with today we've obviously got a lot of threats in there like the rain call that will cause us a few issues but with the assault vest alleviates Veltal's kind of pressure a little bit on that respect of things i think the one thing we could say is the moltres probably gives us a few issues i think we can get around the raichu to a certain extent uh with our amoongus redirection we do have cobaberry in there as well but having the Veltal out in the field it does give the dark aura boost to uh, moltres which can be a little bit obnoxious to deal with i think we're going to have to rely quite heavily on tapu Fini in this one it does pretty well against most things on my opponent's team I've got a bit of a toss up here between like incineroar landorus and reggie steel like landorus doesn't really offer us too much against the rain core it can hit ultras for good damage but if that's water f i think the reggie steel if that's water uh fighting uh urshifu then it gives us a hard time same with can be said with with incineral um whereas i think if we've got reggie steel at least we've got a little bit of stability with something like amnesia we've got iron defense we can kind of stack up on top of each other which will help a little bit more so we'll see i can definitely see the raichu coming here i think it's going to be the big thing that my opponent probably utilizes to to deal with the avelto threat because um it is going to be difficult for my opponent to kind of to, to manage at least. We do see the Raichu and the Luger come out. And the one thing you would say is like, okay, do they have fling? Do they have a way to um, proc potentially a weakness policy on the Lugia? Um, if they do, we can kind of mitigate that with, with the, re the, the redirection. And I think here, rather than go for a, a dark type attack, initially we probably want to go for an airstream to try and at least get some speed control here and uh, although they're probably likely to go for airstream anyway into among us we do have the Corberberry to kind of compensate for that a little bit this turn and then at least with the multi-scale broken what we can do the next turn is potentially go 
um, go after it with a dark type attack. But we're not going to see that. We're just going to see um, Politod come in. Okay, which is not as bad, really. I don't really know what to expect from the Raichu here, other than a fake out, which it may go for. Alright, there's a Rage Powder. From Amoongus, so we'll draw in a, a Nuzzle, potentially, which is, yeah, that's fine. And we get the speed jump on the the uh, the Raichu the next turn. We still have access to Spore as well with Amoongus, you know. That's the one thing that you could say about this team that you could maybe look at improving. I think the, the Trick Room matchup's not great, so that's kind of why I tended to go with a, a slow Amoongus in this team. But you could say, because you do have that Airstream with Eveltal, you could go max speed Amoongus to take advantage of, um, of that. But I think... Uh, probably better off going for Max Darkness into Raichu here just to try and get rid of it and Rage Power at the same time. Because um, there's always going to be the risk at some point where Amoongus might be paralyzed and then we've got that Nuzzle threat. So if we can remove that, because it's bound to be sat. Oh, it's not even sashed. It is a fling variant. So we do remove it pretty quickly from the field. Special defense drop on the Polytoad is going to be useful. Um, it does just go on oh, Ghost Hypnosis, but not going to. Not going to be affecting our um, our good old Among Us because we are paralyzed, so that complicates things. And then the Lugia to come back in, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for my opponent to uh, to kind of get much momentum here because I think we'll Rage Powder again. But what we want to do here is kind of look at the power. So this is physical, We've got special 130, 120. Um, 110 so we want to go for that ah oh, that's physical though isn't it it's physical physical and uh, 110 is it going to be enough to get the polytoad <sighs> i don't know after the special defense we're probably better off just going for the physical max darkness it is going to be aura boosted so we should get it from this range anyway just polytoads more generally bulky on the on the special defensive side yeah, and the Lugia gonna max here, so we'll probably see an airstream into a Moongus, I would imagine. But as as soon as that multi skills broke, then Ivelto's got okay, up in hand, up in hand. Moongus is paralyzed, so what are we gonna see? The thing is with Lugia as well is it, it is predominantly gonna be uh, special attacking. So if it attacks into Ivelto here. And it's not really going to be able to do that much damage behind the Assault Vest anyway. There's the Airstream, it is into the Amoongus. So we should take this, even help and hand boosted. So as I've said many times before, the issue with Luger is it's, it's pretty it's pretty whiffy on its power output. Unless you've got a weakness policy, and even then it's still going to struggle to, um, to damage. To get the damage out that you'd want it to. But... With Urshifu coming out, yeah, we've got the redirection and we've got Snarl to break the multi-scale. Although, saying that, we don't want to break the multi-scale with uh, prior to... Um, so Lugia is going to attack first and the Urshifu is going to attack second. Um, we might be better off switching. Like pulling a double switch here might not be a bad play. It's just then we kind of leave the... Uh, the Urshifu kind of... Yeah, because they're going to airstream into Amoongus. And they're going to... A Surgeon Strike. I just prefer to keep Ivaltal at this point. I know it seems a bit like we could just attack here and Rage Powder. But we Rage Powder. They have the rain up for one. They're going to airstream into Amoongus. And then they're going to get the Surgeon Strikes into um, our Ivaltal. Which is not really... We, we don't want to kind of leave it out in the rain against that. Oh, I should be protecting here. Okay. There's the airstream. Whereas now we're in a much better position where we can just go for a moon blast into the Urshifu, switch Reggie, steal into a moon guess because it's likely um, we'll see the search and strikes into that slot or at least a close combat which Amoongus are going to be able to soak up and by the, the by doing that as well we're kind of getting the regenerator activated as well so it makes a bit more sense 
and uh, puts us at a bit less risk as well. So we've got that moon blast this turn. We can go into. We know the ocean food protected that last turn. So uh, Tabu Fini not in any sort of danger of getting knocked out here. I don't think even by a crit. I think we'll take it from Lugia. I'd be uh, confident enough to say that then we'll be able to uh, to to take that. So. Ooh, Max Quake coming out. That's the choice. That would have been the switch into... Ooh. Oosh. I guess that's a nice play because you get the special defense boost, although I'm not going to save Urshifu. Um, but if they close combat into that Registeel, yeah. That that special defense spit F boost that they've got kind of lost. So the, the Moonblast is still going to be able to take it down to the Sash and then Lugia. In a position where we can just go for Muddy Water the next turn, Rage Powder, and then get Eveltal in and, and kind of clean up from that point. Um, because I think the one thing that we want to stop doing, or not do, is uh, hit that Lugia with a dark type attack before we break the Sash. Because uh, if it has got the weakness policy, like you would expect it to have, just because the, the Raichu didn't have a focus Sash, um, kind of indicates it probably got weakness policy. Issue for protecting. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's that's still fine because, like, we just at this point want to break the multi scale on the Lugia. We are slowing things down as the Aeroblast Blast comes in. Finally, takes down Amoongus. Uh, oh, hopefully, the Muddy Water doesn't miss. That's all we want. Muddy Water misses. It makes the, the game a bit longer, but it does hit. Thank, thank you, Tapu Fini. And there is the uh, the multi skill bust. So paving the way for Evelta to come back in. We still got Reggie Steel in the back. We can go for a snarl here if we want. Um, probably not a bad idea because then it would only put the Lugia on to. No, we'll get rid of the Urshifu. And yeah, we'll just go for a Moonblast as well because the snarl just gets rid of the Urshifu. Oh, we are seeing Calm Mind. Okay, so the Snarl pretty useful in this situation, at least. But we do have Foul Play as well that we can kind of fall back on. We're not seeing an Aqua Jet come. Ooh. Guess what? The, the, the speed boost. I didn't really account for that. But that's all right. It's the weakness policy here that I would be worried about. Yeah. But I think Yvelto draws enough attention to itself where we've got Sucker Punch where we can Sucker Punch, Moonblast, Sucker Punch, Moonblast, Sucker Punch, Moonblast. Do we get the drop as well? Because that's pretty big if we do. No, no drop. No drop. Um, Yeah, Sucker Punch should be enough. And then we can Moonblast again. I mean, the other thing is we could Sucker Punch and Calm Mind here. But I think they expect Sucker Punch. But they, they're in a pretty awkward spot. The other thing to do as well, uh, we do get it, so that should be enough. Ooh, not enough, not enough. Aeroblast, I don't think this will even be enough. But, oh, it's not, it's not, okay. The, the imaginary sash there, Yvelto hanging on, and Tapu Fini able to kind of pick up the pieces. So Lugia, the one thing you can say about it is it is an absolute tank. It can take hits like nothing else in this game. So, really good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to kick off with. Pretty close, even though we had the definite uh, advantage with matchup there. But uh, what we'll do, friends, is we'll finish this one up and move straight into game two. Okay, next up, we have number eight on the ladder. And they are playing a team of Kyogre, Whimsicott, uh, Zapdos, Metagross, Urshifu, and Rillaboom. So, looking at the speed control options, first off, you've got the Whimsicott with the Tailwind there. You're going to have to worry about things like Switcheroo as well, but not really too concerned with that in regards to Eveltal because see with the dark type in there it does give us a little bit of uh, momentum around that. I think Eveltal is actually really good in this matchup especially if we've got like a Moonga support. The only thing that you would have to worry about a little bit would be obviously the, the Kyogre water spout uh, gets around the redirection. 
makes things a little bit more tricky for us of course uh, and Zapdos as well because it does have the max airstream but we do have the opportunity where we could potentially put it to sleep do you like the lead of Eveltal and Amoongus I think in the back I think like Finny and maybe Registeel could actually not be a bad option it just leaves us a little bit short against Rillaboom but I mean with Amoongus and Eveltal if we kind of protect them well enough we should be in a good enough spot to, to, to kind of deal with those threats and then have everything kind of left else left over so let's lock in with these and uh, see what my opponent locks in with. Eveltal feels very hard in this format though, you know, it really does. It feels very difficult. It feels a lot more difficult than, I, I would even say, I don't know, like Xerneas feels difficult in this format in particular, but Eveltal feels very difficult at the minute. So, we're gonna see Whimsicott and Zapdos come out. We've also got threats of like, um, Taunt, it can shut down our Amoongus, but we can go for like an Airstream into uh, Wimmy turn 1. Obviously, we can't Rage Powder if the Wimmy decides to go for a Moonblast here, but that's kind of not the worst if they do. I think we've got to try and keep pace with the Zapdos. They could just Tailwind here um, and go Max Airstream themselves. But with the Assault Vest on, on Eveltal, we got a little bit of stability against against this kind of team. So it's just kind of carving out and trying to get rid of the, the support options. And obviously trying to mitigate as much damage as possible here um, against the big threats. Because Zapdos, definitely a big threat against Eveltal, you know. It's the, the thing that Eveltal doesn't really want to face down against. But we'll stay in. Um, Landorus is very hard to bring to this game. Especially when you're not playing a Salt Vest Lando. I think it becomes a bit more difficult. Um, Assault Vest Lando against this sort of team you could probably get away with but it's not what we got so we have to deal with what we have at hand um, but I think the big thing my opponent's going to want to do is, is try and get rid of the Veltal as soon as possible. We've got to worry about potentially like safety goggles on that Zapdos as well. That could be something that really throws a spanner in the works and if you take a Max Light in here um, turn 1 it could be pretty bad because they could both pretty much ignore what Amoongus throws out here, you know, trying to redirect and both attacks just go into a Veltal. So we do see the switcheroo. Um, it is going to be with the Amoongus. I'm going to take uh, Koba Berry and uh, they're going to take it. So that's a really nice play from my opponent um, because now they're going to be able to just get rid of the Amoongus pretty easily. So you can see the utility there and the, you know, we do obviously take the eject button but now this whimsical going to be in a spot where it is going to be able to um actually take our max airstream which is um uh, which is pretty impressive it's a nice play um but you're relying on us having the cover berry but i mean it makes more sense to have the cover berry especially staying in against something like uh zapdos uh you you're gonna have that item so not ideal not an ideal start for us um do we bring in Finny or do we bring in Reggie Steel and start getting some amnesias up? It's just a taunt. Do they have taunt? I have switcheroo, but their item's gone. And I think they have to max light in this next turn. So I think we'll airstream again and we'll go for an amnesia here. And we'll see what this Wimmy does. They may double into Veltal here. But if they're doubling into Eveltal, they have to kind of get away from using um, Airstream and go for Max Lightning. So it may be a case where the Whimsical goes for a Tailwind and its last kind of turns. Okay, it's going for the Taunt. Want to opt to shut down the Registeel. Okay. And they're going to persist with these Airstreams. We take that pretty well and we'll be able to get rid of their Whimsical in the process, which is good. So... This is not, like, all hope is not lost just yet. Just yet. Um, obviously, we're going to have a Max Lightning that I have to contend with the next turn. But we do finally get rid of the Whimsical, which is always good. But Registeel being taunted is not ideal. Because we can't actually use the, the Amnesia, which we're going to really rely on quite heavily in this match. I would imagine Kyogre to come in here because you can airstream. Yeah. Uh, but it forces the Zapdos to airstream here and not go for lightning because if they don't airstream, then Ivelta will outspeed the Kyogre and get some big 
damage off. Um, so we'll go for the airstream again. We'll switch out steel into Tapu Fini. It'll be interesting to see where the where the Zapdos goes with this play. Whether they go a lightning to just try and knock out the Evelta, which they're not going to be able to do with our assault vest. Uh, or if they go airstream to kind of just get that initial chip and then get the, the big water spout damage onto Evelto going into the next turn. The thing is we still have Sucker Punch, so as long as Evelto can kind of stay and like hold out this turn, we might be in with a chance. We may be. We'll see. Can Evelto do the work? Right. And they still got three Pokemon, we got three Pokemon, but it might change after this turn. Of course, so there's the airstream again, going for the airstream water spout. And we should take the water spout from this range. And Tapu Fini undoubtedly will. But it's going to be about getting enough damage onto the Kyogre, really. Oh, we outspeed the Kyogre, so if they do water spout, at least we are weakening it. That's, that's pretty huge for us. So... Let's see what this Kyogre does. Water Spout would be. Oh, it's an Origin Pulse, so they knew. They knew. Yeah. So we've got the Sucker Punch that we can utilize. Just where we go with the Sucker Punch, really. I mean, we could Sucker Punch. We want to Sucker Punch Zapdos. Probably want to Sucker Punch the Kyogre, to be honest. We'll probably get a bit more mileage. Sucker Punch in Kyogre. Um, do we protect here or do we attack? There's a Zapdos. I think the Zapdos goes after the Eveltal here, which could leave us free. That's why it might be better to, in all honesty, like going for the Sucker Punch into Zapdos and then going Muddy Water into it as well and hope that the Zapdos attacks into Eveltal. Yeah, okay. It's really, really, really boom. It's not ideal. But if we can get rid of the Zapdos here, that's huge for us, huge. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get rid of it. Thunder into... Zalto, yep. So it's just about whether this Muddy Water can pick up the knockout onto, onto Zapdos or not. Should be able to if it hits connects in the rain yeah but obviously we've got to contend with the Rillaboom now which makes our lives hey, oh, way 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 harder but if there's any ever a mon that can um can beat these it's going to be Registeel with one amnesia we might be all right because the rain will be stopping soon well stopping soon I say a couple of turns it's still got two turns left I think so let's see how many turns we've got left. Right, we've got three. Three is too many. Are they gonna uh, are they gonna fake out here? Maybe not. Okay, let's just double protect around this fake out because it just gets around the rain that little bit longer. What we need to do this next turn after this is amnesia, take a origin pulse and then protect again and then the rain's gone there's the fake out yeah and on origin pulse we could have gotten an attack off with finny but we didn't so let's see let's see let's see let's see right we need the amnesia i'm not too worried about the the, the rillaboom i don't think that damage is like that crazy uh, we could try and get a cheeky moon blast into the the Kyogre because if you get the special attack drop, that's that's pretty big. But I think the the Rillaboom probably goes Grassy Glide into Finny now and take this Origin Pulse down to a, a single target attack, which is what my opponent probably wants to do. Uh, but if it misses, oh the Water Spartan, huh? Oh, jeez, jeez. The juice. Right. We don't need to worry about Kyogre anymore. It's more the Rillaboom, I think, that we're worried about. Um, so. 
we need to get an iron defense up, really. I mean, we protect this turn. And then the rain stops. But the grassy terrain actually helping us out probably a little bit more than it is my opponent, to be honest. And that's the next thing we need to, to try and see. Like, hopefully stall out the grassy terrain because the really is still going to hit us hard you know especially if it's got like wood hammer and I don't know if we'll be able to take the double up so water spout water spout out the rains from nowhere near is, is yeah the knockoff that's not good yeah the knockoff is not good yeah because then we lose our, our way to um Hmm, I'm going to be very, very close. Yeah, we lose our way to stall, especially because the um, the grassy terrain is going to be gone soon. So, right, let's go for an iron defense. And let's see, let's see. It's going to be close regardless here. There's a water spout. Right. Yeah, we take that pretty well, pretty well. I don't know if we're going to be able to take, yeah, the knockoff. Okay, that's not too bad. It's not going to do as much next turn. Get nine defense. We'll get a grassy terrain boot. Ah, we're not going to be able to do it. We're not going to be able to do it. Without our leftovers, we can't do it. With leftovers, yes. Without leftovers, no. No chance, I don't think. I think we'd have to have them go for a... I could see them protecting with Kyogre here. But we'd need them to go Origin Pulse and Miss. And then I think we could maybe do it, but I think water spout going to be too strong. Yeah, okay. Well, good game to my opponent. They were pretty high up on the ladder. Able to kind of cut us out of being able to kind of function there. But we've seen two good games with the Eveltal team today. So I hope you have enjoyed them. And uh, I hope if you do try the team out for yourself, you do have a lot of fun with it. It is another Pokemon to consider, to look at, and uh, try and see if you can get it working in this format. Because I do think it has a lot of positives and it does act pretty well. So we'll wrap up now with the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental code. If you do try it out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do leave your comments down below if you do try the team out and let me know your thoughts on Eveltal in general. I uh, I feel like it, it is a difficult Pokemon to play in the format at the minute. It does have some really nice matchups, but it also has some very difficult ones in the current format, especially in the early stages. But it is another restricted to try out that will be on the radar of a lot of players going forward in Series 11. So thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day and I will catch up with you all again on another episode on the channel. So until then, take care and bye-bye.